Spurgeon here with Revzilla, and in this video, we're going to break down the Sedishi Viaggio and Viaggio Parlare adventure helmets available at Revzilla.com. So if you're anything like me, you're looking at these helmets and you're thinking, what am I getting for 120 bucks? Now, if you bump to the Parlare, you are getting a built-in Bluetooth communicator that is designed by Cena. Between the two, the Viaggio and the Viaggio Parlare, both are gonna be identical helmets. What the Parlare is giving you is that you are getting that Bluetooth communicator built in, and it's gonna be the DW05, which is built off the same platform as Cena's SMH5. And we'll break down exactly what that gives you a little bit later in the video, but it does come included. So there's no installation that you'll have to tackle on your own. What you're gonna see for the, break, the basic breakdown of this, injected molded ABS plastic, two different shell sizes are available, and it is DOT rated. Now, three pounds, 10 ounces in a large, when we threw the, uh, the base Viaggio on a scale, and an additional two ounces if you go with the Parlare because of all the internals you're gonna have there from the electronics. But when you consider three pounds, 10 ounces for an adventure helmet, that's not crazy heavy. I was expecting this to probably tip the scales a little bit north of four pounds, but the fact that it comes in around 310, I'm actually okay with that. Now, the shape on this is gonna be intermediate oval, so when you put this on your head, it will be a little bit longer front to back, slightly narrower down the side of the head. Now, this is something else that surprised me. A lot of times when you get in these more affordable helmets, you're gonna end up with a round oval head shape. So the fact that Sidishi went with more of an intermediate oval really works much better for the majority of the American market out there. So 120 bucks for the base version. Really what we're gonna see here are some pros and some cons. One, I mean, it's, it's affordable, right? It's got decent optics out of the face shield. One of the things that really impressed me was that you do have a really solid feel to the face shield. Um, it is gonna be something where you're gonna have to get your hands on it to get it back down. You have a, a push up from underneath, but there's no tab on the outside to really help you pull it back down. We're also gonna notice that this is gonna be able to be used with goggles. So if you are using this in an adventure setting, you can use goggles with this but you can't use the oversized goggles. So any goggles that are gonna have outriggers on the outside probably aren't gonna be your best bet. You'd wanna go with more of a base goggle. The other thing you'll notice is that you are gonna have an internal sun visor on this. Now, the one thing I'll note here is that the actuation is a bit tricky. It you know, has definitely a little bit of a pull to it, and I wish it went down just a little bit further, but the fact that you're actually getting this included for the price point, you know, it's kind of hard to complain about that. Now, the other thing you'll notice with this is that if you do look at it from the outside, from the overall perspective of this, you know, the style really works well for those of you that want to get up into an ADV helmet, um, but you really don't want to start spending a, a ton of coin. Maybe this is your second helmet, or maybe you're just looking at getting your first helmet and you want that ADV style. It works from the style's perspective really well. Really, one of the, the nitpicks that I have with this is that the vents, from an actuation standpoint, from a functionality standpoint, they work okay. Um, the actuation is a bit off. You're not getting massive amounts of, uh, of opening with the front of this. The vent for the front, um, it does open, it does close, but you have to do it from the inside. That's something that we've seen from a lot of other manufacturers. Um, but just, I would have loved to have seen an additional brow vent with this. You know, this is an adventure helmet, so that additional airflow is gonna be paramount. When you're looking at the peak, the peak is not quickly removable. It's really not designed to be removed at all. So with a lot of the adventure helmets that we're seeing out there, you can pull the peak off if you want to and just use it as a regular street helmet when you're flying down the road at 80 miles an hour. Um, with this, it originally looks like it can be quickly removed. You've got the little screwdriver um, cutouts on the, ins on the outsides. But when you get around to the back, You've got these inserts, which are done with an Allen key, um, and it is a time-consuming process to get this on and off, and then really you lose some of the functionality of the venting. So I'm gonna say that this is really not designed to be removed. When I was riding in it, you know, we went out, uh, both myself and, uh, and one of my buddies went out, we were riding in this just to see what it was like. I found that it actually worked pretty darn well from what I was expecting. The only real nitpick that I would have is that, you know, it does get a little bit loud. Um, there is gonna be a little bit more, um, I would say, kind of lift from the peak on this, despite the, the channels. When you get up into those higher speeds, the 70, 80 miles an hour, you do get a bit of a, of a lift from the peak, a little bit of a rattling around. So now what I wanna do is I do wanna take a look at the inside of this, and we're gonna rip apart the Parlare just because I wanna be able to showcase the, uh, the comm system a little bit. So what you'll notice, is you have the comm system over on the left-hand side. And again, this is a designed, this is a Cena design, and it is based off the SMH5 platform. Now, what that means, it's Bluetooth 3.0 technology. 
So you can use this to pair to someone else. You can have a conversation, but it's not going to do it's not going to do conferencing, right? So you're not going to be able to have three buddies out there all talking together at the same time. You can be paired to three different people, but you have to rematch with them individually and have conversations one at a time. What this will excel at is listening to music. You know, so if you want to have one buddy that you're riding with and you want to have some music playing, you can share music, you can listen to the music, um, and then you can have that conversation as well. The range for this is probably somewhere around the 400 yard mark. Um, you can pair this with other units. So if you have someone that has a Cardo unit, you can pair with them. But just keep in mind, you're looking at line of sight. So I wouldn't go too far out of the line of sight. If you go around the bend, you're probably going to lose them until they can see you again. So while you are getting this included, it's not going to be the most sophisticated Bluetooth communication system we've ever seen, but it's going to be pretty darn good considering it's already installed and it's already built in. Now, as we take a look at the inside of this, the one thing that I do want to note is that as we pull this apart, everything is already wired up for you. So there's nothing that you're going to have to install. So if the idea of putting a comm system in a helmet is going to be something that just kind of puts a shiver down your spine because you're you know, not super technologically advanced, it's all done for you. You put it on, you turn the unit on, and you're set to go. Um, the interior, the cheek pads didn't bother me that much. You had a nice contour to the cheek pad. I found they were comfortable. Really what got me was the top liner. And if you notice, when I pull this out, and I'm just going to go ahead and get this out of the way, the, uh, the top liner on the back side just has these little Velcro connections. Super comfortable. You have, don't have any real undue pressure points there. The problem that I had was that the, uh, the Velcro, and it's going to be a little bit hard to see, the, the male side is pushing out, so it actually pushes right into your forehead, and I did find this to be uncomfortable um, while I was riding. I felt like it was rubbing on my forehead. I did move the liner around a little bit, and I made it a little bit more comfortable for myself, but again, that's one of the sacrifices you're getting for the price point in which you're shopping at with this. As far as everything being included, <clears throat> Again, you'll notice that you have the speaker cutouts in here. You are going to have the arm. Um, you'll notice that even as I'm playing with this, the, uh, the sticky on the back side comes a little bit loose. So you just need to make sure that that's going to stay in there. Um, I would probably add just a little bit of glue to the back of that. But again, when we're looking at the price point, these are the pros and the cons. But the fact that it's already wired in there, the fact that you get the speaker cutouts and you have that boom mic, which is going to be running down, um, you know, a lot of times if I'm using a scene unit, I won't use the boom mic, I'll use the wired mic, but this actually works out pretty well. There's enough room in the front where you don't feel like you're swallowing the microphone. So I wasn't bothered with that too much, but I would add just a little bit of glue to the back of the, uh, the speaker pocket. That's pretty much the only thing you'd have to do. And again, I'm not noticing it so much on the other side. I'm just noticing it on the side that has that boom mic coming off of it because there's that additional weight of the boom mic, which is pulling down on the speaker itself. Now, as you take a look at the inside, you'll see what I was talking about earlier with the ventilation. The channels aren't super deep. So while you do have the, the cutouts for the ventilation that runs through the EPS liner, that is going to be the one nitpick. Where, you know, when I was talking about earlier where I wish the channels were just a little bit bigger, not only do I wish that the, the vents to the front had the brow vent, had some, you know, bigger vents to the top of it, as you look at the inside, those channels just aren't promoting a lot of airflow. So if you're riding in extremely warm conditions, you know, when you come to a stop, if you're not riding very fast, you can feel like the helmet's running a little bit hot. Now, the other thing I want to point out, and I just want to push this to the side for the moment, um, the one thing I was actually surprised with was when you look at the Polar, I thought they did a very good job with the internals on this, from the electronic cutouts and everything else, for the fact that this is coming in around the $230 mark. I thought they did a pretty darn good job, including everything. If we pull apart the base unit, and I just want to show you the inside of this, the one glaring miss that I thought that we saw with the regular uh, Viaggio was that there are no speaker pocket cutouts. So for some reason, uh, they didn't include speaker pockets for this. So if you are going to put a comm system in this, it is going to you know, be sitting right against your ears. So if you're thinking about adding a comm system, um, even if you don't like the idea of the base one that comes with the Viaggio Parlare, um, that's probably where I'd bump up to, to that helmet to get that comm system capability. The other thing is if you have you know, a slightly narrower head, you don't need to worry about that as much. But again, just a miss that they didn't include those cutouts on the Viaggio. All things considered, however, the fact that I'm looking at a $120 helmet or you know, with a comm system included, a helmet that's coming in around the $230 mark, I was actually thoroughly impressed. So again, these aren't going to compete against you know, an Arai sitting along the $700 price point, 
but I would say these would be pretty stiff competition you know, for helmets double their cost. When you're looking at a helmet coming in around the $200 to $300 price point, I think Sadishi has a pretty darn good lid for around the $100, $120 mark. So if you're looking at getting into a helmet and you just wanna, you know, you, you don't have a lot of coin or you just are looking at a second helmet with that adventure styling, I was actually pretty impressed with what you're getting for the money with the Viaggio and the Viaggio Parlare. Now there's a lot of folks out there that are already using these helmets. And if you wanna read some of the reviews that are already coming in on Revzilla.com, you can click the info button and see what other folks have to say about this lid. If you're still not sure as to which helmet is right for you, the Bluetooth version, the non-Bluetooth version, reach out to one of our gear geeks at 877-792-9455 or simply shoot an email over to cs at revzilla.com. I want to thank you for joining us for this look at the Sidishi Viaggio and Viaggio Polare Adventure Helmets. I'm Spurge. Enjoy the ride.